I'm avoiding common mistakes entrepreneurs make when starting their first business. So many of us start businesses because we are good at doing the work that needs to be done, but we don't actually know how to set up the structure of our business properly. And we end up trading a 40 hour a week job for an 80 hour a week job. Luckily, that's exactly what Michael Gerber teaches us to avoid in his book, The E-Myth Revisited. In this video, I'm gonna summarize his principles and show you how I'm actually applying them to my first small business. You can also follow along with my E-Myth Solopreneur Workbook down in the description. It'll have everything that we're covering, plus a little bit something extra for you guys. So who is Michael Gerber? Michael Gerber is an author and business owner, and all of his work revolves around improving small business owners and entrepreneurs and making their businesses run efficiently. The entire purpose of this book is to help you build a sustainable business that can function without you and also be easily replicated. If you've ever worked for a large corporation, well, you'll probably be able to identify a lot of the practices that we're gonna be covering. Now, Gerber breaks down his book into three main sections. The E-Myth in the American Small Business, The Turnkey Revolution, and Building a Business That Works. In part one, Gerber sets up and defines the three distinct personalities that are involved in setting up and operating any business. And those three personality types are the technician, the manager, and the entrepreneur. The technician is the doer, the person who actually gets the work done. The technician is probably the first personality trait that made you want to even like get into starting your own small business because you are good at or you like actually doing the work that's involved in making the business run. It is also the reason most businesses fail. And that's usually because in the infancy stage of your business, you are doing everything and you're exhausted all the time and you're not like taking the steps to actually build your business from the ground up. You're trying to do every single position at the same time. The manager is the pragmatic side. They are order, they are planning, they are a manager. <laughs> And the entrepreneur is the dreamer, the visionary. They are the energy behind your decision-making and the force that pushes everything forward in your business. The entrepreneur craves control, whereas the manager craves order. And the e-myth itself is that the entrepreneur is the one running the show all the time, when it's really just a careful balance of all three of these personality types. And most small businesses will fail because the owner, the founder, can't reconcile this. They can't compartmentalize or they don't have clearly defined systems and processes or a plan in place for building and developing and improving upon those systems and processes for getting the work done. That's what we'll actually cover in the next two parts. In part two, Gerber defines the turnkey revolution. The turnkey revolution is essentially using the franchise business model as a system for doing business. And yes, you're exactly right to think about a McDonald's franchise when you think about, when you hear the word franchise, that's what Gerber is talking about. Franchises sell the business itself and a consistent experience to its customers rather than the product itself, right? Gerber says that like, you know that when you go from a McDonald's on the East Coast to McDonald's on the West Coast, they're gonna taste the exact same because of the systems and processes they've set up at McDonald's. Now, it's important to keep in mind going forward that the purpose of your business is to serve your life. It's not for your life to serve your business. So how do you create your franchise prototype? Here are some points for what the model should be according to Gerber. After you read each point, take a moment to think about how you're gonna actually get that done. And to help you out, here are my answers for context. Here are some additional questions from the book for you to ask yourself as well. All of this will be available in my E-Myth Companion Workbook. Now that you've taken the time to answer some big picture preliminary questions about your business, it's time to create your business development plan. This is the real meat of the book and contains a lot of actionable items. And it's broken up into two main parts, the process and the program. The business development process can be defined as a system of innovation, quantification, and orchestration. Innovation is just trying something new in your business. Quantification is asking yourself this series of questions and getting data on like if your innovation actually worked. And then orchestration is implementing it, making it standard practice for all of your employees or for yourself. Here is a real world example of this for you to take a look at. And it's really important that you 
continue to innovate even after you orchestrate. This is a continuous process that never stops. It is the reason that your business will be able to grow and adapt and succeed in the future. Your business development program is up next. Your first step is to establish your primary aim. This is your subjective reason for wanting to start a business. For me, for example, I want to have the freedom and flexibility to work where I want and on a schedule that makes more sense for me. Here are some more questions for you to take a look at and answer. Again, all this will be in the workbook so you don't have to pause and remember everything. Second is your strategic objective. This is tangible. How much money do you need? Who is your ideal customer? And is your idea validated? All things you've probably loosely thought about when starting a business, but now it's time to actually sit down and write them out and write them down. Now that you've answered a ton of questions about your business, it's time to create your organizational strategy. Draw a line on a blank piece of paper. Above the line, write shareholders. This is your role outside of the business. Underneath that, inside of the business, you need to think of yourself as employees. Next, create your organizational chart or or chart for short. I'm sure you've seen this if you've ever worked in like a big corporate office. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna write down all of the necessary positions for getting the work done and who they will report to. This helps you effectively describe and map out all of the actual work that needs to get done for your business. After you've mapped everything out, write a position contract for each role in the organization and sign it yourself as if you're the employee accepting the position. It should contain all of this following information. And here's what my work chart looks like for my business so you can get a sense of what you should maybe start for yourself. And now that you know all the positions that you need, it's time for you to prototype each one of these in your small business. And what that means is as you go to work in the position of sales associate, you go to work on the position of sales associate at the same time. You start systemizing the positions at the bottom first, not the top. You want to be the employees at the bottom doing the technician's work first. This is building a business from the bottom up. Whereas most people just try to start a business as the CEO and work their way down the ladder. That causes people to fail. And as you start going to work on the positions themselves, this is where you start using the development process that we covered earlier. As you quantify the impact of your innovations and determine which of them is the most productive, you should write them all down in a standard operating procedure or an SOP or a manual for your employees. Once your operations manual is complete, it covers everything that's needed for that role. Then you can actually hire someone to take that position. And then you can move up to the next position in the ladder and start the process all over again. After you lock in your organizational strategy, we will move on to your management and your people strategies which are both deceptively simple. For your management strategy, you're gonna to wanna to consider these four points from Gerber. And for your people strategy, here are another four set of points. Again, all of this is gonna be in the workbook that's in the description for free for you to download and follow along with. After that is your marketing strategy. This lives, starts, ends, dies, whatever, with your customer. Use the psychographics and demographics of your ideal customer to determine the who, what, when, where, and how you will market to them. And last but not least, but certainly probably the most important is our system strategy. Now that you've figured out all of these other components to your business, it's time to actually figure out like what your systems are. A system is a set of things, actions, ideas, and information that interact with each other and trigger other systems. I know that sounds vague, but bear with me. There are three different types of systems, hard, soft, and information. A hard system is something like a computer, the technology that you use, the SaaS system, the project management system that you use, or your accounting software. Your office is a hard system, your uniform that you wear to work, that is a hard system. Soft systems are living or ideas. You yourself are a soft system. Your employees are a soft system. One of the soft systems that you will need to develop is a selling system. Information systems contain information that result from the interaction of your hard and your soft systems. Inventory control, cash flow forecasting, sales summary reports, those are all information systems. And a sales and marketing system may contain some of these data points for you to measure the success of your marketing and sales campaigns. 
Now, once you answer all of the big picture questions, you think about who your customer is, you know all of the roles that are required to run your business and you document all of your processes, you should see the business begin to grow at a steady and hopefully sustainable rate. Over time, you realize that you are, you're so dialed in that you're ready to open a second location or branch out into another business then you will know that you have accomplished everything that you set out to do from the start. You're, you've done it, you are succeeding as a small business person and you should be well on your way to living the ideal life that you want and taking ownership of that path and like, that's fucking awesome. I know that I feel a lot more confident about my business and my future that I have this knowledge and these systems in my back pocket ready to go. And if you've stuck around this long, guys, I just wanna say thank you. I appreciate you. I know this was a long one, but it was, it's good, it's meaningful. I think that this book is extremely helpful and contains a lot of meaningful and actionable items that can really help someone who's just starting out avoid a lot of the headaches and common mistakes that people make. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out all the links in the description below. Download the free workbook. It's, again, I'm just making it so that it's easy for you to follow along and actually action on these like questions and these points to help you along in your journey. I'm, that's it, that's, that's why I'm doing it. It's to give you no excuse for actually doing the work that you want to do to better yourself. And while you're down there, guys, please, for me, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know what you think, reach out if you have any questions, I'm here to help, I would love to engage with everyone a little bit more. I mean, like, that's why I'm here, right? <laughs> so thank you again, I appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video, peace.